Okay, 29. All right, 29 is graph that, oh, I don't know how to graph a, a cubic. Graphing calculator, oh, that's a loss, oh, geez. Let's clean that up a little bit. Man, what are you guys doing with the calculator? Slobbering all over it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go y equals, turn it on, get rid of these guys. We're going to go ahead and graph this guy, and then we're going to uh, see if we can figure out all these details. Okay, minus 3x. As soon as you get off, off of quadratics, um, you have to use a lot more advanced techniques to kind of get this information. This, is, this information is a lot better to handle by hand with calculus. So um, when we do this, we want to find f is what on the intervals 0 through 2. So let's see what's going on here. Let's go with zoom standard from 0 to 2, okay? From 0 to 2, it looks like, um, what is f doing? From 0 to 2... Okay, let me make sure that I graph this guy right. Minus x plus 3, x squared minus... Oh, okay, I'm missing something. There we go. Uh, let's square that. There we go. All right, because he was doing two things. Okay, from 0 to 2. From 0 to 2, I would say, oh, you know what? He's positive. But no, he actually goes negative when he goes from 1 to 2. So the consistency that I see here is that he's actually decreasing from 0 to 2. So the answer to this guy is that he is decreasing. Okay. Now what is the local maxima? A local maxima is where this guy is at his maximum. All right. And a maximum value, well, he's actually going off the charts here, but right there... He is at his local maximum, and that is at uh, 3. So he is at 0, 3. He is at a maximum. But a minimum, he's actually at 2, negative 3. So you can see a maximum here, a minimum there. Okay. Now what's happening from negative 1 to 1? Negative 1 to 1, and then from 3 to infinity. 3, 3 to infinity. What is he doing from, from negative 1 negative 1 to 1 and through oh okay from negative 1 to 1 and 3 to infinity it looks like what they both have in common is that they are positive okay and then um, this guy so really this this part even though it's in the polynomial section this actually kind of belongs in chapter 1 doesn't it um, then from negative infinity from negative infinity to negative 1 and then 1 to 3, you can see that he's actually below the x-axis. So you probably would have guessed that it would have had to have been negative. Okay, so that's actually a chapter 1 question, but um, it connects to our polynomials here. Okay, so now we got some polynomial identities, and these guys you probably want to put on your note card. So make sure that you've, um, you've got the formulas. Uh, the formula for the sum of two cubes, which is what we got because I see x to the third, that formula is a to the third plus b to the third equals a plus b, and then it's a squared minus a times b plus b squared. Why? It just is. You can memorize that formula. You could FOIL this if you'd like. Go ahead and FOIL this, and you will get this. Okay, go ahead and FOIL it. You'll notice that there's a whole bunch that cancel out, and you will get this term. So. Uh, these this binomial so you can try it if you'd like if you need that proof or you can basically say to yourself you know what I'm gonna trust mr. Draper it works and then maybe eventually I'll kind of you know um, if I've got the time I'll, I'll do that now what we got to do though is figure out what our a is and then figure out what our B is now what is being raised to the third power in both terms this is going to be two uh, let's see six times six times six is that uh, to the third power. Is that 216? Yep. Okay. So it is 6a, and this guy is just 2. All right. Now that I've identified a and b, I can just execute this formula as he is. So a 
plus b would be 6a plus 2. And then this calls for a squared. So if I square this guy, I get 36 times a to the second. Now notice then if I foiled this, 6a times 36a squared will give me 216a to the third. Okay, so you want to make sure, you could double check that, make sure that if I were to FOIL this and go backwards, I should get this. If you don't, then you forgot to square this guy. Because if you put a 6 there, you're going to get 6 times 6 equals 36, and that is not what you have. Okay, you need this guy to equal 216. So, we put a minus here. And then A times B would be 12A, because 6A times 2 is 12A. The next one calls for b squared. b is 2, so if I square it, he's 4. Okay, so plus 4. Now, it does look like that 4 could be taken out of these guys. So I could take out a 4. So let's take out, a, oh, and I could take out a 2 right there. So is this divisible by 8? I wonder if 216 is divisible by 8, because if it is, oh, okay. So it looks like I can take out a 2 here. I didn't look for a GCF here. I should have. I should have looked for a GCF. So what would have happened is I take out a 2 here, and I get 3A plus 1. And then I'm going to take a 4 out of here, and I get 9A squared minus 3A plus 1. And these two can multiply to each other. So what I did is I screwed up. I did not take out the GCF because I noticed that these two are perfect cubes. But... I could definitely see a 4 go into these, and then I just noticed that 2 will go into these. So what this means then is I kind of discovered that 8, these two multiply to each other, could have been factored out in the very beginning. And now this is reduced to its beautiful factored form. Okay. Now look, if you would have left this as an answer, I probably would have given you 2 out of 3 points, or maybe 3 out of 4 points, but this would have given you like all of the points. Okay. So Watch out for that. Always look for a GCF. And I just basically screwed that up myself. Okay. All right. Now, GCF here. I do not see a GCF here at all. So I will proceed to the formula. Um, I would have never thought that 216 was divided by eight, divisible by 8. Um, so, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Anyways. So let's go ahead and um, do the difference of two squares formula looks like this a plus b, and a minus b. So let's just figure out what our a is. Our a is the square root of all this, that's 5x. And our b is 4y. So piece of cake. We go ahead and break this guy into 5x plus 4y and 5x minus 4y. It does not matter what order you put these because like we said, like addition, multiplication is commutative. Okay, they can go in any order that you like. These guys cannot be broken down any further. Okay, now 27 is divisible by 3. Is this guy divisible by 3? Let's see. Is uh, 12 divided by... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 25 divided by... It is not. Okay, it is not. So, um, now we have the difference of two cubes. That formula is a little different. This guy is a minus b, and then a squared plus b squared. Oh, no, 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 a, b, and then plus b squared. Okay, so that is our formula for the difference of two cubes. Let's figure out what our a is. Our a in this case is 3a, and then our b is 5. 5 to the third power is 125. Okay, so I just execute this. Uh, we've got 3a minus 5 times 3a squared, which is 9a squared. You should be able to just square these in your head. Uh, then I have to add a times b, which is just 15a, plus, and then b squared is just 25. So those guys are good. Okay, there was no GCF in the beginning, so there is no common factor here. I do see a 3 divisible by here, but not here. And yep, so this guy's done. He's absolutely finished.